Okay, you saw me harvest them, or saw my plants. So what I did was I cut off some of the lower leaves and some of the bad leaves that the bugs had gotten. And I used a skirt hanger. And uh, I'm drying my leaves. And I'm drying them in the house because I think the humidity here is the best. But look at those leaves, and these are the small leaves. Isn't that beautiful? So let's see how the tobacco goes. Okay, this is the second way I'm trying to dry my tobacco. What I did was I took just a string doubled with a needle on the end and I threaded it through the stems of each tobacco leaf so that they're apart from each other. It seems to be drying really well. Very pleased with that. It's not crinkly, it's, uh, you know, it's soft and supple. See that? Um, and then I put it in my humidifier. Alright, after about two weeks, it feels kind of like leather, really thin leather. Some of it's sticky, some of it's not. And what I've got here is I've got a humidor that I bought to go with my tobacco. And you can get that at uh, freshchoicetobacco.com. So now what I'm doing is pulling the stems off, center ribs. And if it's dry enough, you'll know. They come off really good and it doesn't stick to your fingers. If it's not dry enough, see if I've got one in here. Um, it sticks to your fingers. Okay? So that one could probably hang a little longer, but I think it's going to be okay in the humidor. It smells like tobacco almost. And so I'm going to strip the stems off while I can, because I ain't smoking no stems. And uh, we're going to leave it in the humidor. Um, I do have humidor liquid in here, and it is maintaining uh, probably about... Uh, 60 right now. I'm going to leave it open and uh, let some of the more moisture come out of these. I think now with the center vine out, they'll, the moisture will come out really quickly. So probably tomorrow I'll close it. Because like this one is really wet. You can tell it's, it sticks to my fingers. Whereas the dry ones don't. But yet, yeah, I can crumble them up and open them right back up. So they aren't brittle. Pretty cool. That's just really cool. Alright. Let's let it keep drying. And then I put it in my shredder. Or you can just put it in your water if you want to make some insect repellent with it. And then I shred it up. I have it currently in Ziplocs because I'm doing some flavored tobacco for my friends. And then I take it, put it in the tobacco machine. Sorry, just finished. It's a mess. And I roll cigarettes. And then, true to fashion, as the canning queen, I store them in a canning jar so they stay fresh. And there you go. That's how you do tobacco. <laughs> I'm learning. I'll let you know as I learn new things. Blessings. Alright, so let me try to answer some of your questions. What can you use tobacco for? So, I kind of looked up some things on the internet. Now, I don't know how true some of these things are, but in the 19th century, Stuart G.G., found some exceptional uses for tobacco. If it's administered externally, bites of poisonous reptiles and insects, hysteria, pain, neuralgia, laryngeal spasms, gout, growth of hair, tetanus, ringworm, rodent ulcer, ulcers, wounds, respiratory stimulant. 
I like the idea of a respiratory stimulant. Tobacco administered by rectum. Constipation, hemorrhoidal bleeding. Of course, it constricts the blood vessels, so yes, that would make sense. Administered by mouth. Strangulated hernia, so you blow smoke into someone's mouth. Malaria or intermittent fever. Dislodging obstructed material because it would once again constrict the blood vessels. And it also can induce vomiting. Administered by inhalation, nasal polyps. Now I found some other interesting things that uh, um, researchers at the University of Louisiana have discovered anti-cancer compounds in tobacco leaves. Now when they're talking about what they've discovered on the surface of the tobacco, there is a, um, like a waxy substance. It makes it touch and feel really soft. They're trying to find a way to harness that waxy substance because that has anti-cancer agents. Um, there is a new therapeutic made from tobacco plants that is shown to arrest West Nile virus infection. Again, the waxy substance on the outside of the leaf. Um, they're showing that it has a protective effect against neurodegenerative disorders. So when we say neurodegenerative disorders, they're finding that um, it alleviates symptoms of mental illness, including anxiety and schizophrenia. That would kind of be a great thing to know if SHTF were to happen, especially when in about 90 days, everyone's psychiatric medicine starts to wear off. It also has found that Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease is lower in smokers than non-smokers. In the 18th, 17th, and 16th centuries, they used to use tobacco leaves for making torches to ward off disease and fatigue. They would burn the torches and the aroma would give you more energy and uh, they said that what they found it didn't actually ward off disease but people who smoke seem to have a higher resistance to, z to disease because they've already um, taxed their immune system whereas those that don't smoke haven't taxed their immune system and so when they get hit with something it tends to hit them much harder um, it's used as an anesthetic. If you mix it with lime or chalk, it can be a toothpaste. Breathing the odor of fresh green leaves of the plant relieves persistent headaches, again, restricting the vessels in the brain. For colds, green powder leaves should be rubbed around the inside of mouth. Uh, it can be used to heal wounds and burns. It is also a good metal polish, and as I've said before, it makes a great um, bug spray. Take the leaves and steep them in water, and that removes the nicotine, bottle it, and put it on your plants. Bugs don't like it. So I hope this helps answer the questions I know they're going to come. Blessings.